hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Ian Mathis. I'm going to be the present the presenter for today. Uh, thank you for everyone uh, to everyone for attending. Uh, before we get going, I have a couple of housekeeping notes. Uh, if you have any questions, please place your questions in the questions and uh, questions and answers section in the chat. Uh, this is being recorded for those of you who have signed up, you should receive a link uh, in the near future for uh, access to this video again. Um, there are some resources listed later in the presentation. Uh, I think we might have some of those listed also in a later email, but you might also want to take a screenshot of some of those as they're pretty helpful. And finally, this will be posted on the North Fulton Master Gardeners YouTube page. And so you can link to this and all of the other wonderful presentations from this series and prior series. Uh, and if you like the content, please like and subscribe so you'll be notified of new videos in the future. Uh, I'm a master gardener, uh, began in 2020, part of the pandemic class. Uh, I've uh, actually been an attorney for 25 years and I'm seeking the Green Acres lifestyle for those of you who remember that show. I'm an avid, avid gardener, have been for over 10 years, grew up with gardening, uh, and I found that I started gardening inside and out. I'm kind of a little bit known for being kind of a, a fig addict. I have over 100 different varieties of edible figs. I'm also an autism dad uh, who shares uh, the gardening with my children to grow minds as well as food. Um, and we have a number of topics for today. I'm going to cover these very briefly. Uh, I'm also going to cover what we're not going to cover today. We're going to answer what is hydroponics. We're going to look at other similar methods to hydroponics. Uh, we're going to look at why we should use hydroponics, some pros and cons of the system, uh, different styles and different systems. We're going to evaluate plant needs and where plants get these needs satisfied without the soil. Uh, we're going to look at common components, supplies, and some DIY or on the cheap or upcycling options. We're going to look at which plants work well in hydroponic systems. We're going to look at a simple crap key system uh, set up for kids and classes, and this is probably the easiest, simplest method of hydroponics. We're going to look at the question of lighting. Uh, we're going to evaluate uh, a method known as deep water culture, or DWC, with an example. We're going to evaluate some pest challenges. We're going to look at uh, plant quality and results from hydroponic systems. Uh, we're going to look at things I wish I knew when I started hydroponics. Uh, we are going to have uh, some time for questions at the end, so please make sure you're putting those in the chat. And we're going to have a number of references and resources. So first off, uh, what is hydroponics? And um, no, I'm sorry, the things that we are not covering. I apologize, I said I was going to cover that. So what I'm not covering, we're not covering a detailed water chemistry, pH, uh, PPMs, re reverse osmosis. We're not going to be looking into specific troubleshooting of plant issues, such as why are my lettuce leaves yellowing. Uh, we're not going to look at some of the commercial plug and play systems, although I will note that I started with an arrow garden, which is sort of the, the gateway device to uh, other hydroponics. So, so looking at hydroponics and uh, what it is, uh, hydroponics comes from Latin hydro or water and ponics, which is labor. So we're using the water to do the labor for us. Uh, it is a system of growing plants using a nutrient rich water and, and no soil. Uh, we are going to have them grown in a non soil medium, which supports the plant structure while allowing the plants roots to access water and the nutrients in it. Hydroponic systems can be used by uh, hobbyist classrooms, home gardeners, modern cliff dwellers and quite effectively by large scale farmers uh, and variation of hydroponics have been used for thousands of years. I guess technically when I put a cutting into a glass of water, it's the most basic form of hydroponics. So uh, other similar systems that are different, aquaponics, which is a cultivation of plants and fish in an integrated system. It's using the fish waste uh, as the nutrients for the plants and the circulation through the plants actually provides some benefit to the fish as well. Um, 
Aeroponics is a slightly different system. It's a cultivation of plants without soil or a hydroponic media, and it's misting the, uh, the stems or growth area for the plants. And I use this, that's probably my favorite for uh, cloning and propagating herbaceous cuttings. It's quite effective. So let's look at um, why hydroponics. Um, I really got into hydroponics because I use gardening as uh, an interactive and uh, stimulating environment to uh, engage with my son. Um, he took to it and ate very well. And I said, what can I do here in the uh, North Atlanta winters to keep that going? And I eventually turned to hydroponics. Um, some of the benefits, uh, there's different space needs. Uh, you have more sterile options. There's a lot of benefits to plant propagation, uh, seed saving. For example, if you want to make sure that you have uh, one variety of a plant excluded from other cross pollination, I think you're able to control that environment a good bit more inside. Uh, there's quite a number of urban options. Uh, so if you don't have a yard, you don't have places for containers and everything else, this is definitely an option for, uh, for gardening. Uh, and as you can tell from the picture, there's no soil mess in my basement. And as I like to say, happy spouse, happy house, uh, to have an inclusive version of that saying. So what are some of the pros and cons? Uh, as I said, we, you know, plants can be grown year round, just about anywhere. You have greater controls for increased yields. One of my favorites, no weeding. Uh, water savings actually up to 90%. Some people are surprised by this because, well, you're growing them in water. No need for crop rotation. Um, there's a little more compact spacing of plants uh, in about a maybe a two and a half square foot area. I'm able to grow five heads of lettuce, for example. Quite, quite nice results if you'll see from the pictures. Um, we're also reusing materials. Uh, there's opportunity to upcycle. Definitely reduce use of uh, pesticides or fewer pesticides, more effective use of organic pesticides and no seasonality. So I can grow tomatoes and smell them during the winter when I'm trimming suckers off the plants. Quite nice. So what are some of the cons of hydroponics? Um, there can be some higher startup costs. Um, there are energy costs if you're inside, although I do uh, advocate the use of LEDs, which is definitely a lot less uh, electricity and heat. Uh, a con pathogens can spread quickly if present. So that's why we talk about keeping things clean, sterile and maintained. Uh, there can be some more frequent maintenance, um, if, depending on what kind of system you're looking at, replenishing solutions or changing things over. I pretty much get to the basement to check on things just about every day, but I have had a week away for spring break and got things set up and I had no issues. Not all plants are gonna work well in a hydroponic system. I'm generally not gonna be growing uh, watermelons, corn, and other things that are gonna have more interesting height or space requirements. Um, I'm not gonna be generally growing perennials, although I have found you can turn peppers and other plants into perennials uh, in the right conditions. Uh, there's a potential for critical parts failures. Um, I had my uh, aeroponic cloner one time trip a breaker and I, came back from vacation and everything was not well. Um, you'll notice from the purple lighting in the background, uh, some of the older LED lights have that unusual purple glow. This can lead to silly questions from friends. What are you glow growing? I think there may be some stigma as to uh, people using hydroponics or indoor growing for um, unlawful purposes, which I, uh, I'm not gonna condone and wouldn't engage in, so. Um, another big con is traditionally grown produce might no longer taste as good. I can't eat store lettuce, um, but nothing compares to the hydroponics. So it's a, maybe you can see that as a con. So I want to talk about uh, a number of different styles of hydroponic systems. The first we're going to talk about is Kratky, which is a sus suspended pot, non-circulating system. Uh, it's very basic. We'll get into details on that, as well as the deep water culture system, or DWC. DWC, um, shown in that bottom right picture, uh, you'll have uh, just one step above crack key. We'll get into that. What I'm not going to get into is a nutrient film technology or uh, a gutter system. 
Um, there are also drip systems. A lot of us are familiar with drip irrigation outside. This is just a system that uses the same drip, but then collects the solution and recirculates it again. There's flub and, uh, flood and drain or ebb and flow, as I flub that one. Um, the flood and drain basically raises a water level to soak the roots and then drains back away into a reservoir. And then we're going to look just briefly at aeroponics, which I mentioned earlier, and I have some pictures from that. We're going to jump right in with the Kratky method. Uh, this is named after a uh, horticulturist from the University of Hawaii, B.A. Kratky. Uh, he had a paper in 1996. If you Google the Kratky method, you'll find a ton of information. He's updated his study and findings quite a number of times. Very interesting and something that looks like a lot more fun than practicing law to me. Um, this is defined as a suspended pot, non-circulating hydroponic method of deep water culture. So in simple terms, it's a plant hanging over a nutrient solution where it grows. Um, and you'll see a detailed example and demonstration in a bit. So some of the basic concepts of this, you're gonna have an upper part of the root system is gonna be exposed to air with relatively high humidity. Uh, so the, all the roots aren't within the solution. It's gonna have air roots and water roots to not use very scientific terms. Uh, the roots, however, must not be allowed to dry out. We need to make sure that there's always a solution. Uh, the lower portion of the root uh, system should gather the water and the nutrients you're going to get oxygen needs satisfied by the upper roots. And then the nutrient solution, you can add to it, but not to the point where you're covering air roots or you may drown your plants, same way as if you have uh, too much of wet feet in your in-ground plants. So the next step uh, up from Kratky is the uh, deep water culture. So it's going to be very similar with the setup, as you'll see in a little bit. Um, the nutrient solution can be topped off and changed, and we're not going to get too much into the nutrient solution changes and everything else. The big difference here is we're adding a uh, bubbling stone or aeration system to the uh, reservoir. And this provides oxygen to the roots within the solution and not just the air roots above the solution. Um, and in the system that I set up, I had about five containers running off one air pump and uh, I was able to use a splitter to support that. Uh, we'll see a picture in a little bit where a very robust root systems developed. When I saw the picture, I knew that was deep water culture because the roots were growing very deep into the solution instead of growing more towards the top. And that's because the roots need oxygen. So. Mention briefly that we have aeroplonic cloners uh, as well. This is a system that I built out of a uh, home improvement store tote. Uh, holes were drilled. I have neoprene inserts that are you know, pennies a piece. Um, and I built, a, I used a submersible water pump that goes into a PVC structure with uh, misting heads. Um, the solution fills in the tub. The plants are prepared and placed above it. And if you're going to use a pump in the solution, heat and uh, heat and light combine with the, with the moisture, algae becomes an enemy quickly. So in order to avoid the pump heating up the solution, I actually used a, uh, a short cycle timer, uh, which is probably the most expensive part of the, the setup. But I will say that this is probably one of the fastest ways I've ever found to propagate herbaceous cuttings. Uh, I think in this example, I was actually propagating uh, fig cuttings. Uh, which does work as well. Um, the silver spray uh, on the lid was not just uh, because it's shiny, it actually helps block the light. And that's just something you're gonna see mentioned a few times here is light plus water and nutrient solutions is uh, not a good combination. Um, how fast are the aeroponic cloners? Here's some picture of some uh, lavender uh, that I took cuttings from. I turned one plant into 23 plants. Uh, the roots on the bottom right picture are after just a few days of um, exposure. It really took off and I had a very mild um, 
solution um, added in the reservoir. Very, very pleased, especially when I can end up with that much lavender in my garden. Looking at what are the plant needs, uh, especially for those of us who've gone through the Master Gardening Program, we got to learn about uh, all of the processes for plants to use water, minerals, nutrients, CO2, and oxygen, uh, um, as well as light. The soil is uh, provides uh, stability for the structure and also provides a source for the minerals and water to be contained in. We're replacing that in hydroponics with uh, something to hold the plants or seeds and then the nutrient solution below. Sunlight, you can do hydroponics outside, but most of what I'm addressing is inside with uh, artificial lighting or natural ambient lighting. So what are some of the common components, uh, supplies and other options for uh, some hydroponic systems? Uh, these are all very basic and I do try to find ways uh, to reuse or upcycle things in case a school or other program wants to uh, encourage that kind of recycling and do things a little more on the cheap. So you need a container, uh, light is the enemy. So uh, something that does not allow light to pass through it or could be wrapped or coated to make sure nothing can go through, it's good. Uh, in the deep water culture system that I use, you'll see some table busing tubs in the top right corner. I think those with the lids were maybe $9 a piece and have last years and years for me. Um, five gallon buckets from a home improvement store or a $2 charity donation at the firehouse subs for a pickle bucket works. Um, you generally need some sort of a media or growing uh, structure. Uh, rooting plugs uh, are very common and probably my preference. Rock wool uh, is, or those are the yellow cubes off on the right. Some people use a coconut core, coir, I never pronounced that right, or expanded clay pellets. Um, and you'll see from the examples and video in a little bit, I sort of uh, improvised a little bit on some of those. Um, with the net cups, you can also DIY a number of options. Uh, I show a little yogurt container there on the bottom center, uh, and I'll show another example of how I used a yogurt container or recycled food container, uh, once cleaned and sterilized, of course, to make my own net cups. Uh, for the DWC, you're going to need uh, pumps. Uh, you may need an air pump or a water pump, water if you're going to use multiple containers from one system and then uh, possibly timers for your lights and pumps as well. So we wanna talk just a little bit about which plants do and don't work well with hydroponics. Uh, again, I think I mentioned some of the corn and watermelons earlier. I'm not gonna say that's impossible, but uh, I don't have that kind of space in my basement. Uh, you'll see on the picture on the left, uh, that's a, a deep water culture plant. You can see how far down those, I'm guessing tomato, uh, roots grew down. So a lot of it depends on how much room do you have? How large of a container or reservoir can you use? Um, how much support can you offer? Is it possible to, uh, I've seen cucumbers grown well where someone had a container toward the floor and they trellis them up um, and grew them up the trellis. Um, I also like to look at how do the plants grow? Uh, root veggies are generally not uh, as commonly grown. I'm not gonna grow a two foot carrot through a net cup. Although you'll see a link at the end to a guy on YouTube named Jeb Gardner, who's grown radishes and quite a better number of uh, root vegetables just to see if he could do it. Um, I generally find the herbaceous uh, or less woody plants do a little bit better. Um, my greens and lettuces especially, uh, generally you can look for determinate versus indeterminate. I've grown tomatoes through the winter but I really do look for uh, a determinant because um, I'm not gonna end up with eight foot tomato plants in my basement for long. Uh, and then also look at the growth cycle, uh, plants that um, go from seed to maturity and harvest uh, on a shorter duration generally work well. Although I have had uh, a holy basil plant and uh, pepper plants that grew uh, about a three year period. So I held them on almost as, uh, for several years. Um, you need to look at what the pollination requirements are. Um, obviously we're not gonna, at least in my house, we don't have bees. 
Uh, we don't have other pollinators. Um, I have uh, been able to successfully uh, pollinate um, tomatoes, peppers, um, citrus, quite a number, number of things, whether it's with a Q-tip, a toothbrush, or the tip of my finger, uh, there's a lot of options depending on the type of plant. You also need to look at how much light you, do you have. Do you have a huge south-facing window where you could put a, a crap key system with plenty of light? Um, that obviously is going to be plant dependent. Um, there are a lot of artificial lighting options for a lot of smaller plants. I find the shop lights with LED works, but for some of the larger or more light uh, intensive plants, I actually use uh, full spectrum designated grow lights. Um, and the, if you were to have a lot, there's a lot of stuff on eBay and Amazon and everything else, which a lot of it's very suspect to me. Um, when in doubt, there's a, a great shop like Atlantis Hydroponics uh, down in the Chattahoochee industrial area. You will walk you through what your actual needs might be. Um, you could spend a fortune or you could spend very little and still do very well. Um, so again, you know, I love the smell of tomatoes growing. There's a certain smell even to the uh, vegetative side, not the fruit side. Um, so I generally will try to have at least a tomato going at some point during the winter just to keep my hopes going for the, for the spring. So we're going to uh, look at a simple setup for kids in classes. And this is a lot of the reason why I wanted to do this video. I've had a number of other parents and um, even some uh, school classes asking about what kind of a setup could we do that could teach about plants and teach about hydroponics. So I think simple is better. Uh, we're gonna look at using the Kratky method. Uh, we try to keep it simple and safe. I did in this example use uh, quart mason jars with rings and three inch net cups. Um, if glass is an issue, you could build this out of a number of items and I'll have some pictures in a little bit showing those. Uh, we're gonna use, I, I prefer off-gassed uh, tap water. I have a little chlorine in my system, but not chloramine or whatever the other one is. So I can off-gas in 48 to 72 hours. And that's basically just letting the water sit open um, to let all that sort of evaporate out. Uh, you need some sort of water soluble nutrient. Uh, again, these are these can be available online at your local uh, hydroponics store or even at your home and uh, home and garden center that uh, just make sure you're looking for an actual uh, water soluble nutrient. Uh, you're going to need some sort of rapid rooters, which are what I used in this example, but you can use rock wool, chunky perlite, number of things as mentioned. Um, with something clear like a ball jar um, or something that might let light pass through it. Um, as my dad would say, we use tin foil. Uh, I've learned that it's actually aluminum foil now. Uh, so I use a lot of aluminum foil. I wrap that. It's nice because it's recyclable um, as you swap them out for the next growth. Uh, some plants to try for kids in classes. Uh, I like a, a, a faster lettuce, like a black seeded Simpson or some of the other faster lettuces. And there's even some smaller Tom Thumb lettuces that, uh, that are a good option as well. Uh, in this process, we're going to fill the vessel until the solution touches the, the growing media. Um, and that would be, uh, in my system, the, uh, the rapid rooter or rock wool. Um, you can use a coffee can, yogurt cups. I'll show some pictures in a minute on that as well. So other supplies uh, for this example shown, mason jar, net cup, rooting plug. I'm gonna use uh, in one example, some expanded clay and others, some other pebbles. Um, and the last ingredient there that we need is actually a kid. So uh, since my daughter's always wanted to be uh, a video and YouTube star, I gave her a chance to volunteer and help with the next video. And this will probably be about four or five minutes. Hello and welcome. We are filming a quick demonstration of how we can do a simple Kratky system to grow plants. And this is an easy demonstration uh, for uh, kids in school. And I happen to have a kid here. I have my daughter, Charlotte, who's uh, reluctantly volunteered to help me with this video. So we're going to show just how simple it is to uh, do a planting in a Kratky system. So the first thing we're going to do is to get the black net cup and we're going to put some of the uh, glass beads 
and you can use, uh, go ahead and put those in the bottom of the basket. And this is uh, just to provide a little bit of weight and then also to give some support for the um, planting plug. So let's just put a few more in there, maybe four or five. And then go ahead and get the rooting plug. Okay, very good. And hold it sort of in the center with one finger and then remember to support it with the pebbles around it. You generally have it growing straight up and down. Some people use the expanded clay pebbles, but these are washable and reusable. These are just dollar store glass beads and I think they're more fun sometimes for the kids too. So, a few more. Support it. And almost done. Magically, I have just as many as we need laid out. So, okay, Charlotte, if you could now put it into the mason jar, and that's a one quart mason jar, it's a good size to use and a lid. And you'll notice that the net cup sits perfectly. And then we add some nutrient, very mild nutrient solution. And you'll notice the liquid will fill up just to the bottom of where the rooting plug is. And now when the rooting plug starts to dry out, it won't because there's that little bit of liquid until the plant starts to grow. And what are we gonna grow today? I know you love to eat vegetables. Uh, tatsoi. Tatsoi, wonderful, very good. And uh, in the middle of that rooting plug, there's a little bit of a hole. So those little teeny tiny seeds, drop them in the little hole, please. And do you know why we were putting three? Why? Just in case some don't sprout. So later on, we'll actually have to trim them up and um, if three grow, very good. Oh. One more, very good. Yeah. So now we don't want to have a lot of light getting to the roots and that looks like a clear jar. So what do you think we could do? I put the aluminum foil on Aluminum it. foil around the jar. Okay, so now that we have it almost all set up, we want to make sure that we don't let the light on the roots because roots don't like light. They like dark because they're used to being underground. So since we don't have underground in a hydroponic system, we're going to use some aluminum foil and wrap the jar and wrap it on up. Very good, and then smush the top down. Don't cover it up, just sort of, let's just smush it down a little bit like that. There we go. Now, we would just have to find a place with some light, like a window, south-facing windows best, or under even a fluorescent light. So, the next question I have for you, Miss Charlotte, is when this grows into a giant, green, beautiful tatsoi plant, are you gonna eat it with me? Yeah. Okay, very good. Thank you, honey. I'm going to have one more video just showing a slightly different way of uh, not direct seeding. An alternative method to starting plants in the Kratky or other hydroponic systems other than directly seeding them is to start plugs in a small tray and I usually overseed a bit, so I usually manage to remove one of the plants. Careful not to hurt the other stem. I do love using fly tying scissors, those are nice and precise. You'll see that in this tray, we've had a bit of root growth. It comes from right outside the plug, just simply grows through this method. I simply place the plug into the net cup. And since the 
growing medium is smaller than the cup, I fill it in, in this case with clay pebbles, which are available at your local hydroponics store or other places. This would then get placed into our ball jar or other growing vessel. I'll fill that in just a moment. And I also wanted to show you that if you don't want to buy net cups, you can do something like this yogurt container. I think this was a keto yogurt or something to that effect. And instead of using the expanded clay pellets, I'm just using dollar store glass beads. And in this example, more roots coming through. And it looks like I actually didn't overseed that one. I don't like them to be too low in the container. But we can fill in around. And this is really just for support. Probably a good bit less delicate with this than the one I started. So plants are fairly resistant, even when they're young and tender like this. So. And. This would again go into the vessel. The next question being how full should we get the water here? And I've actually prepared a very mild nutrient solution to get these filled. We obviously don't want to have anything too strong with nutrients. When we first get started, and the plants are still tender. So you'll notice that I barely have that plug dipped into the solution. That will enable it to just keep that plug moist until the plant starts drinking up the nutrient solution and creating air space for air roots. And each net cup, especially the DIY, the DIY, will have a different measurement. So and that's just a quick example of how I use already started seeds to get started into the system. And I'll turn. I use this system quite a bit if I know that I'm going to be planting in success in succession when doing the deep water culture of those large black trays of lettuce where I'm growing four or five uh, heads of lettuce at a time. That way I keep them cycling through. I did want to do just a little bit of an update. Uh, after about 18 days, uh, those same uh, plants that I was just showing in the last video uh, are on the left, uh, growing nicely uh, with some examples of the roots on the right. So uh, by the time that we're actually doing this presentation today, I've eaten the lettuce and it was quite wonderful. Uh, my daughter's uh, tatsoi uh, actually only generated, uh, germinated one of the three seeds, but it is uh, on the six or seven leaves now and should be doing well. So I look forward to having her eat her vegetables soon. Uh, again, here's some other ideas if you want to do this for kids' classes, things on the cheap, upcycling. Um, I've seen a number of people use coffee cans, uh, five-gallon buckets with a foam float. Um, I want to make sure I'm using an appropriate uh, foam uh, in that system. Uh, it's another photo of my DIY net cup, um, and I made sure that I had one with an appropriate sized lip. Uh, to fit the uh, to fit the the ball jars. So let's talk just a little bit about lighting. Uh, we know we mentioned earlier that you can place something in the window. I know that most of us who have started seeds inside have had situations where we have our seedlings start to get a bit laggy uh, when we don't have enough uh, light. So I you really need to tailor this if you're going to use ambient or natural light to. 
uh, to what kind of a plant and uh, how much light you're actually getting for how many hours. Uh, for a lot of my smaller plants and seedlings, I use shop lights, just simple uh, four foot uh, cheap shop lights with LED, uh, but usually uh, mix uh, the 4000K and 6500K lights in uh, to give a little more of a spectrum. Uh, and that's sort of uh, my holding stage when I'm bringing the plants into the larger system for later. I use the same system for starting seedlings for outside as well. Um, and we can get into grow lights. And in the grow light uh, market, there are LED lights, which are my favorite because it's lower power and lower heat. Uh, there are fluorescents, uh, just regular old uh, uh, in incandescent bulbs and also the high pressure sodium or HID. These are the traditional grow lights. Um, and they have, in my opinion, they put off a lot of heat. Um, they probably provide some of the best actual light, but uh, there are the, the offset of heat and energy costs. So in terms of the question of how much must you spend, um, you know, there's, it really depends on how many plants you're looking to grow and how much of an area you're planning on covering. Um, some of the cheaper lights that I'd started with that weren't just the shop lights were $89 and now I'm probably mid 200s, but I'm able to grow I'm under two of the larger lights. I actually have six citrus trees growing inside at least until the spring. So you can get a lot of uh, value for the, uh, you can get a lot of value for the dollar. Can you spend an absolute fortune? Sure you can, but I'm not go growing a cash crop that a lot of these higher end lights are designed for. So taking a look just a little bit back at that deep water culture, providing an example of that. I'd shown the picture of the black table busing tubs earlier with the lids. Uh, and this is where I had uh, planted five uh, lettuce plants and uh, these were slower lettuces, but uh, ones where I was doing the cut and come again, where I was taking the outer leaves, harvesting those. I think we'll have a picture of that and of the leaves in a second. So these grew quite a bit. I had several water changes over the course of the life of the, of the lettuce. Um, so you're gonna need a growing vessel with a lid, an air pump, tubing and aeration stone net cups or something that you configure to hold that growing medium. Uh, your nutrients, light. Um, so I've most of what I see here are either gonna be five gallon buckets, other tubs, even the uh, black and yellow totes that you're gonna see at the home improvement stores. So what are the pest challenges? Obviously in an ideal world, we wouldn't have to deal with any pest inside. But as anyone who's ever brought a plant in from outside and then later dealt with some of the creepy crawlies, uh, that's not the case, although I find this to be much easier to control. Um, we have our advantages and challenges. Some of the benefits of it is weather's not a factor. Uh, the, we have a more limited pest pressure, at least until it isn't. If anyone's ever had an infestation of spider mites, you know that you really need to get ahead of it um, uh, because it can really spread. Uh, we're also some electronic options. Uh, I have a UV and fan combo light that really helps with any kind of fungus gnats. So what are some of the challenges that we need to look at? Uh, obviously you have safety concerns with a focused exposure. Are you spraying a pesticide in your home inside? Obviously there's some concerns doing that. Uh, personally, with my own choice, I am organic on pest control, so most of what I'm using indoors is very safe and can be used in a small container. Um, I will say that, uh, please remember, I've had this uh, beaten to my head through my master gardening training. Uh, the label is the law. Make sure that you are following uh, any pesticide labels uh, to the letter. Um, some of the other challenges, uh, there are no natural uh, predators uh, available. I've looked at a number of uh, predatory pest control options, but I haven't convinced my wife to let me release those in my basement. Um, the humidity can be an issue or a lack of humidity. So if you're gonna have something getting too dry, you might have uh, you know, more or less mites or other uh, fungus gnats and whatnot. So the pesky trio that I deal with mostly fungus gnats, white flies, and scale. Um, and I'm not gonna get too much into the exact options for uh, control there. I know there's different choices. 
So what can you expect from a basic uh, hydroponic system? Uh, so I've generally found that the growth of the plants is rapidly accelerated. Uh, the speed improvement's wonderful, really healthy roots. Um, the quality of the produce that I was able to produce has been absolutely marvelous. Um, I find less imperfections, which, you know, I'll, I'm not very picky, um, cutting something off something I've grown so I can eat the rest of it. But still, if you, um, if you have people that are pickier eaters, um, less imperfection is always nice. I think you get to use more of the plant. Um, uh, I think with some of the, I, I feel good about some of the nutrients that I'm using and I'm, I think it's leading to a more uh, well-balanced um, produce. Um, a lot of what I'm doing with the lettuce inside, you know, you see example on the bottom right is uh, where I'm growing lettuce in succession and I'll generally use the cut and come again. So most of the lettuce on that top right picture, those were taken from, and I think in that situation, 10 lettuce heads that I came back to in another eight to 14 days to cut again. Um, it's really nice production. And uh, if you buy store lettuce, um, you'll be amazed how quickly it goes bad. I put the lettuce from the basement in the same conditions and it's impressive to have lettuce that'll last 10 to 14 days well in the refrigerator. So um, also uh, you, you might notice that I have a temperature and humidi humidity um, uh, device on the bottom right picture. Uh, I generally try to keep an idea of, you know, how much humidity am I looking at? What kind of temps? Uh, I do grow in my basement. So uh, is, am I going to get too cold in the winter? Am I going to get too hot in the summer? Um, I think you'll see on this that I range between, oh, I think 75 and 79. So I think that was probably a summer grow in the winter. I'm probably 70 to 74 most of the time. I'm going to get a bit into things I wish I knew when I first started hydroponics. Uh, this is a picture of a mechanical room in my basement where I've done uh, a lot of the growing, this was several years ago. I have everything here from tomatoes. I think they were unfortunately indeterminate. I have dill and peppers and lettuce, a number of things. And one of the things that I think about most is I probably was doing a lot too much in too little space. Uh, you'll notice some of the ball jars where I've either wrapped some in foil or painted them. Um, and uh, that the painting them is also a pretty neat little option. Uh, to save on the foil, although that is recyclable. So the first big tip that I have on that is buy once, cry once. I know that this is uh, common with a number of hobbies. Um, I started out with some lights that were, I, too, I think, too uh, low powered for what I ultimately wanted to do. By the time I upgraded a couple of times, I probably could have bought the lights that I really wanted earlier on. Um, some people might do the same thing with, okay, I don't want to start with DIY and tubs. Let me go ahead and go with a uh, prepackaged deep water culture multi uh, container system for growing, let's say, you know, eight different uh, tubs at once. Um, obviously, you know, this is uh, going to vary a lot depending on how much you can or want to spend. Uh, space, the right plant, right place. I've, I've heard that and said it a thousand times. Uh, making sure that you're choosing the right thing, like the indeterminate tomatoes that I was growing here probably weren't the best option. So um, making sure that you have some access to water. Um, I have probably carried hundreds of gallons of water in between uh, a sink in the basement and the area where I grow. Uh, ideally, I would have had a little closer access to water, but um, and it's good exercise, I guess, anyway. Uh, also having appropriate power. Uh, you could probably see I'm running four lights here and then I have a bubbler. So that's four things to plug in right there. Make sure that you have appropriate power. Uh, uh, and then I would strongly recommend make sure it's, uh, it's an insulated circuit. So that it's a, you know, a GFCI circuit so that it's safe around water. Um, I really encourage you to learn from others. Um, you have a high, local hydroponic shop. Um, 
as this is going out on YouTube, those are all over the world. Uh, here in Atlanta, I know we have a few. I've probably mostly been down to Atlanta's hydroponics and the folks down there are wonderfully helpful. Um, and uh, they help me understand a little bit more about building out some other systems, understanding lighting and other things. Uh, ask for help. Uh, there's a lot of wonderful people ready to help. There's a lot of stuff on YouTube. Um, I have links here to uh, a few people. Uh, the first of which is Kang Starr, who has the most patient and calm ability to explain how to do things on the cheap. I really learned a lot from him. And, uh, um, uh, and then another Jeb Gardner, who uh, is a little more experimental, um, interesting and hilarious videos. So there's a ton of content out there. Reach out to your master gardeners, um, see what kind of other advice that you might have, talk about um, setting up systems. Um, I'm more than happy to help. In fact, uh, if anyone has any questions uh, that end up in the YouTube comments, I'll try to get to those as best I can. Uh, and learning from others' mistakes. So I was having seen things that have failed online. I've tried not to replicate those. Um, I just want to double check to make sure I don't have... have a couple of comments I'll need to make there at the end in just a little bit. Um, so what comes next, uh, and this was obviously uh, brought up as an introduction to hydroponics. Uh, pretty quickly from here, you're gonna get into what is my water pH, what are my water sources, what other gears available, what other systems can be built inside and outside. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to expand from this. Again, I started with an arrow garden and ball jars and uh, sort of worked up mostly to the deep water culture uh, level um, and haven't built a flood and drain or other system, although I wouldn't mind doing that in the future. I pretty much received the uh, declination of the aquaponics because my wife doesn't want me to have a fish and plant farm in the basement. There's a number of references that we uh, have uh, available. Uh, and if you're online now, you might want to take a quick screenshot of this screen. Um, this, I believe some of these will be referenced later uh, when we have an email out to those who have signed up for the, for the course. Um, uh, just generally, uh, my first go-to place for anything plant-related is the uh, UGA Extension uh, site. They have a number of publications there. Uh, we have links to the Kratky method um, and some easy start guides, uh, deep water culture beginners guides. I have the links to Kangstar and Jeb Gardner. Um, and then we also have some interesting uh, lettuce specific information. Uh, it is for the Uni University of Florida. So um, uh, being a diehard uh, Bulldog fan and grad, uh, I'll, I begrudgingly included the Florida reference, but they're wonderful folks down there too. Um, there are a number of resources also that uh, I wanted to make sure that everybody sees. We have uh, our social media groups. We have our uh, email signups. Um, we're on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram. We have our web page and YouTube channel. Um, I've also been asked um, to see if we're if you're beginning to uh, work on your spring garden, be sure to check out the Northfold Master Gardeners online given garden plant sale. Uh, please get your orders in as soon as possible. The sale ends on April 1st, 100% um, guaranteed plants. Uh, your bulb and rootstock purchases will help make the North Fulton Master Gardeners uh, Incorporated grow, continue to provide quality horticultural education to the North Fulton community and beyond. Uh, and of each order, 50% goes directly towards helping North Fulton Master Gardeners meet our goals. Um, and we thank you for your continued support on that. Uh, you'll see a note in the link um, there. Um, I want to give a very special course specific thanks to Atlantis Hydroponics in Atlanta, um, in West Midtown. Uh, amazing folks that really were patient and helped educate and provided some uh, a little bit of promotional support to get this message out for this class. Uh, and they were kind enough to offer a discount code um, if you want to take a screenshot and check them out. Please tell them you heard from Ian Mathis and that we, uh, we appreciate them contributing to the education here in North Fulton. 
We also want to thank our promotional partners uh, that are all listed here. Uh, without these promotional partners, it would be really difficult for the North Bolton Master Gardeners to continue to deliver uh, the education quality and uh, programs that we do. So thank you so much for all of these partners, um, as well as to our media partners. Um, we have quite a number here and uh, special thanks to Ashley Frasca, who's uh, indulged me with uh, posting additional references for this course. Um, especially around the time of her Saturday morning programs. Uh, so uh, this is the last of our 22, uh, 2022 spring classes. Uh, there are some wonderful topics that proceeded today. Uh, these are all available on YouTube. Um, we are planning now for our fall 2022 classes. Uh, topics are still being uh, worked out, but I can guarantee there'll be wonderful content coming up. Um, so please watch for that. Or if, uh, especially if one of, you're one of our Master Gardening members and you have a great topic you think people would like to see, uh, please reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and I think uh, they told me to go under an hour. So I'm under an hour. Um, normally I have a top uh, problem of talking too long. It's probably because normally as an attorney, I get paid by the hour. So I'm actually going to uh, leave a little bit more time for questions. Um, and Tom, if you're there, do we have any questions or is there anything else that I forgot to mention for now? There we go. Okay. So uh, although I can't, uh, don't see, see my face, as long as we can see yours, we're in great shape. <laughs> All right. So uh, one uh, person who watched, uh, who has a scout, uh, a young uh, boy or girl in the family who is involved in scouting and is using a thick shipping styrofoam cooler with some kind of aerator to grow spinach outside in zone 10B, where it'll be in the low 50s and the high 70s over the next three months. Uh, any concerns for them? It sounds like that the vessel would be light tight, which is good. Um, I think if you're running 50 to 70, you should be okay. Maybe just periodically in the hotter part of the day, take a water temp reading. Um, if you're seeing algae growing or uh, it starts looking a little funky, then maybe look at giving it a little more shade or possibly even uh, putting something more light reflective on the outside of the container to keep some of the additional light off. Um, I've used foil, uh, aluminum foil. I've also used some of the slightly bubbly wrap that uh, you use for um, HVAC systems. So there's a lot of options there, but I, I, I don't think I'd have too much concern as long as you're watching those temps, to make sure it doesn't get, um, if you start getting into the 80s on the temp, I'd probably get a, I'd probably get a little little concern, but keeping the sun off, it should help. Okay. Uh, another person uh, asked about what was obvious that your system is in your basement. And the question is, does this system cause high humidity in the basement generally? Uh, how do you deal with that uh, if it becomes a problem? Very good question. Um, I think think with the mostly closed system, so you're only going to have a, a smaller opening for uh, the area around each of the net cups. Um, so a lot of the, it's not like having a large open container of water. So the lids definitely help. Um, that's, I think, another good reason to keep that uh, temperature and humidity uh, gauge down there. Um, and uh, I haven't noticed that it's become more moist than some of the other areas uh, of the home living here in uh, humid, uh, humid Atlanta. I also have uh, one of the HVAC systems in the house that's in that room, so it is pulling, pulling some of the air um, out as well. Um, haven't, hasn't been a concern, but I do have a humidity meter to watch for that just in case. Makes good sense. Uh, another person asked about the lavender that you showed earlier uh, during your talk okay. and uh, a question about whether or not uh, that can be done in many of the same ways that you described later in the talk. So could we grow lavender uh, using a crack key or deep water culture? Absolutely. Could you do a cutting uh, 
Could you do a cutting for it? I think as long as you have an appropriate amount of moisture in the, uh, I would, I have done cuttings and grown them in the rapid rooters or rooting plugs. Uh, you just want to make sure that it doesn't get dried out. Um, uh, I mean, basically, when I if I were to just start the cuttings in water, that's technically a hydroponic system as well. I just honestly found that that aeroponics um, mister, it, it it's on a cycle timer, so it sprays and mist it for three or four seconds, and then it's off for about five minutes, um, sometimes longer. So. Uh, I don't know what it is about it, but it, it really it really works and gets those roots out quickly. Um, uh, probably even more so if I were to put, use a tomato sucker or something else that I pulled off um, that's more even more herbaceous. Okay, and another uh, uh, viewer uh, described a little bit of using their method of using seedlings from egg carton germination, then transplanted into net pots with clay pellets and a cooler placement for about eight hours of sunlight a day. Does that sound reasonable to you or is that another way to do it? I, I definitely think so. Um, if you're gonna have the seedlings uh, started, um, you can start seedlings in a mix or other uh, tra more traditional media and then get them in, rinse and get them into the, the system. You just want to be really careful not to break roots or break any other structures of the plants. Um, I like the idea of um, getting them into that tub or cooler for a certain period of time. Is that going to be more difficult here in Atlanta in August? Uh, probably so with, uh, with how hot it's going to get. Um, again, looking at the solution temps, but I think that's a very, a very good option to avoid um, having to deal with some of the uh, indoor space requirements or lights. Good point. Uh, let me combine three of these together, three questions together, and ask you a little bit about the nutrient solution. Uh, one person wanted to know what kind of nutrient solution uh, should you stay away from? Another wanted to know if the uh, so-called compost tea type solution would be good in this system. And finally, uh, is there any specific recipe that you would suggest? Very good. Um, definitely all good questions. I love compost tea. I have not tried it in hydroponics. Um, I'd like to see, it, I haven't searched for, but there, there may be some, uh, some video or other research out there. I would probably try Googling and looking for that first. My only potential concern is you have so many wonderful living organisms in that tea. How is that going to work into the system? Um, I think it's worth an experiment. Um, in terms of the other types of solutions, um, there, uh, there's, there's so many. I mean, if you were to just walk down some of the aisles down at Atlantis, you're going to see that there's probably you know 200 different nutrient options. Uh, and there's everything uh, from uh, a miracle Grow liquid base, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it works. Uh, Tom's, I think, has some. I like the Flora Grow series where you actually can uh, balance between the different uh, macronutrients. Um, I usually off gas maybe four or five gallons, and then I'll add the liquid nutrients uh, that I want, and then I'll go... Um, uh, top things off or uh, replace uh, the solutions. Um, I, I can't say that any one particular solution's better than the others. I know that uh, it's general hydroponics um, flora series that I use, uh, but there's a lot of great ones out there. Um, that's a, another good one also, if you wanna to talk to the local um, hydro store too. Great, great. Um, one person, uh, I think, noticed that you were able to get more than just a few leaves of lettuce. And I think uh, she wanted to just uh, make sure that that was the phrase of cut and come again that you meant that you can actually go back and uh, get more cuttings off the same plant. Absolutely. Um, I do that a lot. Um, some, of that, some of that may be... Uh specific uh specific to turn off my timer so i didn't go over an hour um that may be a little more specific to the type of lettuce but uh for the i generally will grow a non-heading lettuce um and i will take the outer leaves um and sometimes leave them a little thin they will grow back out and and fill out so 
uh, you know, again, I showed that picture with all that lettuce um, from those same plants. I probably got three, 10 plants, probably three harvests like that. Um, when I have all the containers going, um, I start just bringing bags of lettuce to the office to share because it's more, it's more than we can eat. It's uh, wonderful to share. So great stuff. That's amazing. Um, one person was concerned about the uh, deep water system that you mentioned and described. Uh, what kind of issues might uh, occur if the water is not changed at all? So depending on how long the plant is going to be growing, uh, the plant is going to be using some of the water. The, obviously, the water is going to be used by the plant or uh, evaporate, usually used by the plant, and then the plant will um, uh, release some moisture as well. Uh, so at some point, the water level is going to decrease. You may need to add more to it just to keep the system uh, operational. But also, as the, as the water is used up, there are certain salts and other residues from the nutrient solution that are left behind. And at some point, um, without changing it, uh, you're going to find a real negative impact on the plants. Um, and I don't have the, all, all the technical uh, descriptions of what some of the salts and residues and everything else are. In some of the tubs earlier on, when I before I learned about this, um, I actually had to chip some of the um, uh, salts and other residues off the off the container, so um, it will build up. So I do recommend changing every um, at least every couple of weeks. Uh, a couple of questions related to the Kratky method that you mentioned. Uh, first, does it need daily care, and uh, how often should the nutrient solution be changed? So one of the things about the Kratky and the way it's designed, depending on the plant, you might not change the solution because the plant will have grown its course before you needed, before it depleted the reservoir. Um, and that obviously is gonna depend on your ambient conditions and a number of other things, as well as the type of plant that's in it. Um, there are, I, I went out of town a couple of weeks ago and I wasn't able to check on the plants for several days. Perfectly fine when I got back. Generally, if I know that I'm not going to be able to check on the plants for a little bit, I'll make sure how are, how's the solution level? Is there anything that needs to go on with it? Let's let it go. With that said, I think that's one reason why it's, it works well for a classroom, um, because you can go away over a weekend or long weekend or, or the ever increasing four day, um, you know, teacher programming work days, uh, days off. Um, you can you can avoid several days of having to be on top of it. Okay, and uh, one other question related to organics in the solutions. Uh, do you recommend anything or how do you do that? Um, in terms of organics on the nutrients, um, I'm not currently aware. And I, honestly, I just haven't looked for it for an actual uh, organic uh, water soluble uh, nutrient. I'm sure that there's something out there. Um, I'll try to check in with the Atlantis folks to see what they have down there, and maybe I could post something on the YouTube later. Um, although all of my pest control, um, and my integrated pest management solutions are all organic. So I'm, I'm neem, I'm diabetaceous earth, I'm uh, a number of other um, organic options there. Great. I think that's got it. And uh, other replies can be posted as we see them come up. Uh, but thank you, Ian. This is fascinating stuff, just fascinating. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. And uh, a big thank you to everybody out there who has uh, asked questions, participated, watched today. Um, I look forward to additional comments on the YouTube later. And also a thank you to my daughter, Charlotte, for uh, volunteering for the video. So I guess uh, that's about it. And thank you, everybody. I look to seeing you guys out there in the gardens.